What's up guys, this is Tim, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to leverage regular expressions in your programming. I'm going to try to show why they're useful to know, why you should learn regular expressions if you're dealing with web applications or large amounts of data or even back-end services. Um, regular expressions is really something that's good to have in your, in your tool belt. Um, it's supported by a number of different programming languages. Um, so there's different flavors of regular expressions. There's PCRE, which is Perl compatible regular expressions. There's JavaScript, Java, curl. Basically every programming language has a regex engine. Um, regular expressions are essentially a way to filter through data to search for patterns or, or specific strings or keywords. Um, you can search, filter, replace, match, um, rearrange um, your data and uh, by looking for those particular patterns. And essentially, it's a, it's a notation. And across the different flavors, the different drivers of regular expressions, they borrow and use basically the same notation. So if you learn it in one programming language, chances are you can, you can write right regular expressions in other programming languages as well. And I'm going to show you some, 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 um, some use cases uh, where, where you might use uh, regular expressions. You know, typically if we work with data, um, like maybe log files or, or even API data or even NoSQL database or, or things like that, the, the data is structured. And it's, it's great when you have structured data because you can, you can parse it. But if you don't have structured data, regular expressions is, is really comes in handy at that point. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of different things that you can do with it. So right here I have, um, have reddit.com. And if I pull up the console, so again, this is going to be JavaScript. But if I pull up the console, um, you know, I might want to evaluate this site. And I might want to look for something. So... If I look through the page real quick, okay, so every link here has a title, has you know um, some text that represents the link. Um, so maybe I want to get all the all the link titles. Um, I could do that with JavaScript, and I could like you know um, I can select these elements from the DOM, and then I can look at the text. But I can also just do it from a, a, a regular expression data standpoint. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw all the I'm going to throw the entire DOM into a variable. So let's do that right here. Okay. So I'm creating a variable called markup and I'm passing it the entire DOM of text. So I just executed that and if I run markup I get back the DOM. So now I know that everything on this page is in a variable, so I can run a regular expression against it. So, you know, maybe I want to see, um, well, let's let's go with the example I just said. Let's try to grab all the links, um, the text and all the links. So if I look at the link in the DOM, I can see that a particular it follows a particular pattern and I've already gone over this so I know what I know how to describe that pattern using regular expression and the the regex method that we're going to use in this case is, case is called match so you pass it a string in this case it's going to be markup and then you do dot match and you pass the match function a regular expression and it's going to return all the matches that match that regular expression and it's going to return it in an array. So a regular expression is typically denoted by two forward slashes followed by what are called modifiers. So the regex goes within the two forward slashes and the modifiers at the end um, kind of um, describe this, this sort of regular expression. So G stands for global, meaning we're going to not just stop at the first occurrence. We're going to look throughout the whole entire string. And then I just says make the whole regex case insensitive. So if I look for a capital A, it'll also look for a lowercase a. So the regular expression, if we want to grab the links, I already went over this, 
is if we look for rel with empty quotes and then a right arrow and then we'll do not left arrow left arrow this should give us back yeah so this goes through and gives us back the titles for each of these links so the first one is um, Okay, so it actually it grabbed this too. So Google Pixel, Japanese government, I knew that the car, anteater tongue. So it's all there. Um, and it's all in an array. So for instance, if I want to get the first one, I can just do that. And that's the Google one. And then, you know, this one. Because um, that shows up here and that also shows up here. Um, so I can index that array as well but so without even using any real programming logic I was able to create a pattern to grab all those titles so you can imagine if I'm creating a web scraper or something like that and I don't know what to expect regular expressions is a great way to get at that data even if it's not structured um, you know and then if I wanted to clean it up a little bit I could run a for loop that would remove um, you know this rel part and just leave um, the data that I care about. So let's see here. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, so let's do this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pass this into an array and I'm gonna call it R A R R. Okay, so now I have an array, and then if I just wanted to clean it up a little bit. I already did this, but I created a for loop that just goes through each iteration and replaces the data that I don't care about, removes it, and then rewrites it. So now we have our array and it's just a little bit cleaner. So we still have this left arrow, which is, is kind of annoying. So we could do something like this. And now we have a really nice formatted of all the of all the titles on, on this Reddit page, and this is just using you know regular expression. But you know, say we want to do something else. Say we want to check for you know the presence of the word you know anteater. Um, you know, regular expressions really makes this really easy as well. So again, we have the word markup, and we know the entire DOM is in there. But JavaScript offers a utility called test, and you pass it a regular expression, and it'll evaluate to a Boolean and um, determine if that string is in the. I did that wrong. Is in is in that. Determine if the regex matches on that string. It'll return true or false. So if I pass ant eater, this should evaluate to true. Now, if I pass anteater123, that should evaluate to false. So it's checking and then in real time, you know, determining if that string's there. And you can imagine we can write an if statement to say, okay, if it's there, do something. And if it's not, do something else. Um, and again, this is a direct string match, but we could, we could say, hey, are there any, you know, are there any href? attributes true there are so we know that there's links on this page and I see I didn't have to supply like what's in there this is a pattern that'll just match on anything up to the next double quote so I'm able to use regular expressions to kind of figure out this stuff about the data really easily so um, you know, as a programmer, as even a front-end programmer, you know, regular expressions are just in incredibly useful. Um, you know, most tools actually do have like native support for regular expressions. Like if I navigate over to the network tab here, and again, what the network tab is just, um, it just aggregates all the HTTP requests on a particular page. So they're all coming through. But for the filter here, there's an option called regex, you know, so, for instance, may I be, maybe I want to get all the all the um, all the requests that come from the Reddit 
domain. You know, I could do reddit.com, and that is useful. Um, but say I want to get, you know, all the all the requests that come from Reddit or Google. This is where regular expressions comes in handy. So I'll do www. Dot, and then what I'll do is Reddit or Google. And now we have, it filters them all. So it actually searches through not just the protocol here, it, like it searches through the entire request and you can see it's right here. So in some cases it's right there, but it's either gonna have Reddit or Google um, because that's what this regular expression says. You know, we could say, hey, get every, get every request that has, you know, numbers in it. Okay, so this has numbers in it. Um, let's let's see if we can filter by this. So we could do, but maybe we don't know what number it is, so we can do this. So this was a clever thing here. This gets every request that has a CB parameter followed by some digits. I actually didn't know these CB parameters were that prevalent, but they are. So that's interesting. Um, yep, CB. I'm not sure what CB is used for, but, and again, we don't care what digits. This is just any number of digits, one or more. Um, so, you know, you can see that's a really great way to kind of, you know, sift through your data in a more sophisticated way. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, you know, regular expressions is not the only, I mean, JavaScript is not the only implementation of regular expressions. There's other ones as well. So we could do the same thing using curl from the command line. So say, for instance, we want to curl google.com. And maybe we want to check that. Um, maybe we want to check for the existence of the body tag. So we can do something like this. Essentially, we curl www.google.com, and then we pipe the output to grep, and then we pass it our regular expression here, which in this case is just going to be body, and then we're going to count. This is the C flag. So we can see here. There's two instances of body, which is exactly what we'd expect because there's an open body tag and a closing body tag. But if we just do this, which would denote the open body tag, it gets reduced to one because there's one close, one open. Um, you know, we could see, okay, how many, how many links are on the page? Three. Um, let's see a set of digits. Okay, so three. So there's different ways to denote digits across different regular expressions. But you know, we can we can grab these um, we can so right here it got the line that has the word body in it, and because the source on google.com is minified, this is actually all one line. But the point is, you know, we're dealing with data that's not JSON, so it's not that JavaScript object notation data, and we're still able to easily get at the information that we care about, and you know, we can pipe it into variables or into arrays or do whatever we want. And regular expressions are very cheap, so um, you know, navigating through a JavaScript object or iterating over an array. You know, it takes some processing power, but regular expressions are, are inherently very inexpensive to run in terms of computational resources. So, you know, they're always great to have at your disposal. And I find just a lot of the times it's easier than any other way of, of determining attributes about data. Um, regular expressions can be the easier solution in a lot of cases. And you know, if you're doing front end web development work, if you're looking through log files, if you're navigating through databases, you know, it's, it's, it's really handy to know. And like I said, a lot of the third party tools like Google Analytics or the Chrome dev tools all give you the option to utilize regular expressions. So instead of looking for, you know, a match on a bunch of um, you know, IDs or a list of strings, you can just create a pattern that describes your data and you can use that and it's a far cheaper 
method to achieve the same aims. Anyways, guys, that is all I have today on regular expressions, and I hope that is useful.